Hello once again people of the internet and welcome back to Retro Rewind where we dust off old games and see if they're still worth your time playing. So should you play SimCity 2000 from 1993? We'll talk about the graphics, the audio and how easy it is to run on modern hardware. But first... Gameplay In the wake of the original SimCity's blockbuster success, Will Wright didn't just rest on his laurels. No, he dreamt bigger, bolder, and simier. Embarking on a quest to craft an entire universe of sim games. Because who needs reality? Reality sucks. But Will Wright returned to his roots to refine the city building alchemy. Enter Sim City 2000. As the omnipotent yet oddly unelected mayor, you start with a blank canvas of desert, with a view to turning it into a functional, profitable, bustling city. You have to take care of your population's healthcare requests, security needs, and their burning desire to not be burning. The goal is to create a city so idyllic, so downright utopian, that virtual people across the digital divide will flock to your pixelated paradise. But beware, the road to utopia comes with a price tag. Balancing the books between tax revenue and public satisfaction is like playing financial Tetris. You can also take part in scenarios, and these thrust you into the mayoral shoes of a pre-existing city, inspired by real-world locales. And just as you're getting comfy in the office chair, disaster strikes, earthquakes, alien invasions, plane crashes. Now it's up to you to steer the city through calamity and bring your budget back from the brink. Because nothing says fun like crisis management. The game was released on the SNES, the Sega Saturn and the PlayStation. All of these are obviously controller based with PlayStation even receiving mouse support. But let's not forget the PC gamers, who enjoyed both MS-DOS and Windows 95 versions. Spoiler alert, the differences are more than just operating systems, but that's a story for another part of the video. Verdict. Graphics. Let's rewind to 1993, a time when high definition was a term used for liposuction. SimCity 2000's graphics are a perfect example of that era. It's a visual feast that's as good as it gets for city building aficionados of the early 90s. Every system's version of the game is slightly different, each playing to the strengths, or should we say limitations, of their respective systems. But the best looking by far is the Windows 95 edition. And there are no graphics options, what you see is what you get. A well-run city can become quite large and complex, and it's a marvel to zoom out and view your whole city from above. Every blocky building is a testament to your godlike mayoral prowess. So do the graphics hold up? Well, if you're into the digital equivalent of a fine vintage wine, then yes, they aged beautifully. Verdict. Audio. The game features your usual Max's brand of plinky plunk midi music that's like when stuck in an elevator. And while it's not going to be winning any Grammy Awards, it's a perfect backdrop for those long nights spent zoning residential areas and raising taxes. The sound effects are basic, but good enough to convey what is happening. For example, fire sounds close enough to fire, that you know you need to buckle up and deal with it fast. There isn't anything new or innovative when it comes to the sound, but it performs its job well enough. Verdict. Please to obtain, install and run. I saw this game sitting in my EA library. It's probably free at some point. And my mind whisked back to the days of me sitting by my overpriced and underperforming catalog ordered PC that barely runs Windows and playing this game, meticulously plodding my cities. I knew this had to be the next Retro Rewind. Oh, it's a special edition, I thought. Visions of a remastered city builder dancing in my head. Let's boot this baby up, I said, naively clicking play on the 140 megabyte file that promised a trip down memory lane. I was greeted with the DOS emulator, DOSBox, starting up. And then up popped a series of laughably low res logos. And then the game menu. And then up appears a strange, unrecognisable UI and a blurry mess that was supposed to be my canvas to build the city. Confusion set in. Had nostalgia played a trick on me? Was this the game I once knew and loved, or some imposter wearing a low-res disguise? 
That's when I realised there were two versions of the game, the MS-DOS and the now elusive Windows 95 edition. And modern Windows? It guffawed at the very idea of installing something so ancient, let alone running it. But as always, passionate gamers came through with a new installer and fixed executable so that they run perfectly well on modern systems. The Windows 95 version is, unfortunately, not available for purchase, but a quick Google search will find tons of websites that have done the noble job of archiving it. The MS-DOS version can be purchased from EA Store or GOG for around 5 quid. Verdict. Final thoughts. In an era dominated by side-scrolling adventures, Will Wright dared to break the mould. With SimCity 2000, he didn't just raise the bar, he built it, zoned it and taxed it. It was a great stroll down memory lane. I fondly recall hours spent fine-tuning the pipes and jolting life into power grids. It was a simpler time. A time when being a mayor meant more than shaking hands and taking bribes. Yet, as I gaze into the 21st century gaming landscape, I struggle to find a reason to dust off this classic. Sure, it's a masterpiece of its time, but time marches on. SimCity 3000 and SimCity 4 followed it, shining brighter in the city building cosmos. And let's agree to never speak of SimCity 2013. Then came the developer Colossal Order, striding in like a city planning messiah with the perfect city's skylines. Who then unfortunately went full EA with a thousand DLC and a broken sequel. But in summary, while SimCity 2000 may hold a special place in our memories, the world has moved on to shinier, more polished cityscapes. Final verdict. Subscribe for more.